hello guys welcome to my channel in this video we're gonna dive deep into vim so vim is a text editor using 42 call and i remember when i started doing pc i used to hate vim because i was not able to exit vim but then after a little bit of practice i started to become fluent all around the vim motion and today i want to show you my vim running configuration so basically i decided to stick with vim because during the exam you have to use the terminal and there are only few text editors you're allowed to use one of them is vim or you can use nano or other so i decided to stick with vim, vim mainly because during the exam i can write code effectively and for this reason i keep coding all my 42 code project all the big project in vim my fdf to do my mini shell and all other projects and one of the peculiar thing of my configuration is that i don't use plugin mainly because i want my configuration to be portable to the exam environment so vim is capable to do a lot of things without plugin and today i'm gonna show you the configuration so first thing i'm gonna do is go to my github so this is my profile on github as you can see down here I pin a repository, it's my vim config and here you can see we have a vim rc file, basically rc stands for running configuration and here I made a small readme with all the updates I have made during my studies 42 with my running configuration and it's evolved quite a little bit and also I link some youtube videos then another thing i want to show you it's vimium snake and then this is an extension it's called vimium and basically it's allow you to use vim motion in the browser so what, let's introduce to the vim motion so you can see here if i play j and k i go up and down right so now Basically this site is not gonna work if I have my Vimium extension on. So one thing you have to do is sometimes you have to disable. So you can, can go here, exclude Vimium keys on this page. And can I save change, all right. Then if I go here, you can see I can move the little snake only using J and K. So basically those are the key you need to use in order to move around in Vim but and then with E you go in insert mode then if you press S you exit insert mode so I think this is a pretty cool little game and then there is another video I'm gonna link it's so this is one of inspiration for the video it's a very great video and then if I try to use Vim to edit a file for example, for example I can use main.c you can see it's pretty empty I can press I to go in search mode and can int main hello Vim users here you can hear guys the bell basically Vim telling you what are you trying to do and this is like if I press H over here and try to move to the beginning there is nothing more I can move on then if I want to exit Vim I just press so you have to say colon W for write and Q for quit. So remember W stay for write and Q stay for quit. Then and then every time I press semicolon, you can see over there. I can say set number. You can see I get some numbers. Alright. So every time I press colon, it's basically saying be my command. So if I say Q, I quit, right? Then if I say V, I'm going to write so and then you can see I get this line written you can say quit it's the same thing but you say W and quit all right so if I say syntax on the syntax now is on and then this double if I go with my arrow key it has a working history right it's pretty cool so if I say syntax oh you see all the text is the same color so basically if you want to have your syntax on you go like this 
And then I can say I color scheme. Dark blue. This is the color scheme. And my favorite color is L4. But here it's looking a little bit different because I customized PowerShell. Let's now learn how we can maximize the usage of Vim. I'm gonna create a file, I'm gonna write on it, I'm gonna name it vimrc. And then in this file you can basically write the comments you want. So I can say set number, so just syntax on. And now every time I open up Vim, for example another file, so sample.c, you can see I have my nice number over there. But you guys heard another thing that's pretty annoying, it's the bell, the bell is very annoying, so right now I'm gonna access my Vim configuration, so if I go to Vim and open up, you see this is another cool shortcut, if I go with the O key here, it's gonna insert a line and then it's gonna put me in the insert mode. Then. If I go set VB, that's basically visual bell. V and then with the, this syntax, I can insert comments. Then I say with W, quit. And then if I see this is a visual bell, it doesn't make the sound anymore. And then another cool thing I want to show you, it's like a lot of people ask, how are you going to be able to manage multiple files with Vim? And then if I say L, capital L, X, it's gonna open this other tab. It's open this sidebar. So if you wanna enable mouse support, you can do it by set mouse well, A. You can see you move around with this for thing. So J going down, J going up, H move back. So let's start with another shortcut. If you press capital G and double small G, you go to the beginning of the file. Capital G, you go to the end, I press O, and then I can paste this stuff. So if I save, I run it. Now, every time I open a file, I have this nice sidebar where I can access things. So to move across the, those two tabs, I can just press Ctrl W. Ctrl W, I can move back and forth. And then here you can see, there is the comment, let's need tree to open a vertical split and hide some unnecessary details in the tree. So this is basically very useful for Norminet. So I can say source. You can see what I did here. So basically with the source command, you're gonna reload the beaming configuration. And here, so here with setlist char, I'm declaring this weird char. Like for space, I have this little dot, and then for tab this. So here, if I press tab, you can see here. You see, basically, Norminet. If I have a space here, and I want a tab, I can do R for replace, then tab, and then it replace the space with the tab. So that's pretty cool. You can customize Vim how much you want. If I go GT, I change the tabs. Then Ctrl W to go from here to the net pre listing, you can see. And then GT changing tabs. You can manage multiple files at the same time using Vim. Another shortcut, you see I did it with double Z, this key. You set basically, this is the course line, it's on line 18. Z is like centered it up with the screen. You see this is the command I use, it's alighting the cursor line. This can be a little bit annoying, I don't want to guys to just copy and paste my Vim configuration and try to find what works for you. Let me just list some shortcuts for you guys. So let's say I have a function, it's some random function, it's void, right? And this function it's just print enter from stuff. Now let's say I want some nice indentation, right? So I go back to my Vim running configuration and then I can say set auto indent, set smart indent, set C indent. And then 
with D you go into visual mode as always to go back to normal mode shortcut it's like delete a word you can just say D A V and you delete a word now you wanna undo some change you press U and you undo you wanna redo some change Control R and you redo the change that's pretty much it remember those key combines then another complaint a lot of people make it's you don't have auto complete in Vim basically you do it by press some and then Control P you can see some random function and then I can call it like this you start typing and then sometimes you forget you are in set mode and this happens to you this is my regular Vim right you are in your normal mode you move around and then every time you press insert you go insert mode and then you can have a real nice visual feedback and then maybe with this stuff you're not gonna have like those random stuff in here because like you know for sure now you are in insert mode right now you're in normal mode so yeah you can find this stuff online and then anytime you happen to have some error messages you can just add ex exclamation point so let's go attention found a swap file by the name then you can see if i say yeah, SRI, you can see the result those file basically it says if i can put e edit anyway basically explain why this happened so if i can say edit anyway i think i already show you guys another of thing you can do with him one of the thing i wanna say it's like you can cost fully customize the way you want it to behave like one of the annoying thing it's if you go with to write something like for example a macro and then you exit and then you press to, try to press g you can see what happened now it's a mess it's because you forgot caps lock and then you have to do undo 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 three times and then like it takes time to learn the motion like I show you the little snake game then another cool thing you can do it's also in my Vim running configuration it's a little bit of script you can write your own script in Vim okay like you see before opening up it's give me a warning and basically it's telling me that something it's illegal but now it works so let's go back line 72 column 72 and then I go there and now this is true I'm gonna quit all, so quit and A for all. Then if I open up main, the error disappear. And now I can see that this is basically a full thing. Like you can see the relative number. So if I go, if I wanna go to the line printf over there, I can put 4j and then I go there. And this is line 10. But if I go insert more, they change. It go back to the normal number. So pretty cool stuff. A lot of stuff you can learn on your own if you want. As I wanna say, being good at Vim it's take a lot of time and effort, and like the learning curve it's very steep. But once you get started, you start loving it. You spend a lot of time trying to customize, like. But then the pleasure of you going to the exam in 42, and then like you are the first one to finish because you know how to use Vim, you know to copy and paste, you know seed. Like I can show you. Uh, let's say I go in visual mode, right? Two, I have already these two stuff. I go S and then slash. I'm gonna put some word I want change. So, for example, sum. Then sum slash G for global and C for confirmation. Then it's gonna confirm. You wanna change this? I can press yes here and not here and yes here. And then I can save it. But if I wanna do in the global file I can do with percentage s and then i can say printf then ft printf then g without confirmation it's just gonna do it for me i go u undo pretty cool right then here another shortcut i can do it's percentage you, got, you can see here there is file name and say helper.c and then here I'm in helper.c so if we're gonna use a helper fu helper function I can do it so yeah I think there is a lot of thing I say in this video that might like be a lot for you if you are a beginner so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I try to share you my tips of learning Vim 
so i think right now i'm gonna leave it down in the comments all the resources you can think of and with time and practice you're gonna learn all the shortcuts you're gonna, i still think i'm a beginner in beam because you never fully became a beam master and yeah that's pretty much it that's the end of this video